Roy Smith is our grain market analyst this week. The latest USDA crop progress report shows conditions across the country remain largely unchanged. Soybean ratings are identical to last week, while the scoring in corn moved one point from fair to good. In Nebraska, rainfall has nearly made the state full again. The latest U.S. drought monitor from UNL shows nearly 98% of Nebraska in no drought classification, leading to the best conditions since July 26, 2011. We talked with Roy Wednesday morning and started by asking him to update us on his final sales of old crop corn. I, I started uh, around the 1st of April and finished up uh, about uh, uh, last two weeks in, in June and, and uh, basically my philosophy is always don't, don't store corn through the 1st of July. Well, this year uh, I was just a little premature. If you'd have held on till the uh, 5th or 6th of July, you'd have made it, uh, had a little better price, but uh, year in and year out, the, the what I call the drop dead theory has is, is worked very well. And, and, and it did all right this year. We left a few pennies on the table in this last rally. Give me a quick update on what crops look like in this area of Nebraska. Eastern Cass County looked really good. Uh, Western Cass County has had too much rain, just like a lot of other parts of the state. And so uh, yeah, I'd say right here where we're talking, uh, things look really good and our prospects are real good. But uh, you go 100 miles in any direction, it's not necessarily the case. We've recently seen some pretty volatile movement in both corn and soybean markets. Were you surprised how hard markets reacted after that June 30th report? I was surprised in a way because uh, the markets were, as you said, very volatile and, and uh, had a really nice uh, positive response to the r report. Now, having said that, I know when I was hauling corn there in, in uh, May and early part of June, there was hardly any corn moving and they were sort of waiting for my truck to get there to dump so they could fill a, a semi and go on with it. So there wasn't nearly as much corn in farmers' hands as what the trade would have us believe six months ago. So if you look at soybeans specifically, they climbed the mountain, now they're kind of on the way back down, but in old crop corn or old crop soybeans, I suppose, if you didn't make sales on that run, what's the advice to the farmer now? You still got the crop, it's still worth a certain amount of money, it's actually worth more today than it was a month ago. and you're probably going to need those bins. You don't want to store old crop and then have to go to the elevator with new crop. So I say that uh, drop dead philosophy is still in place. And if you've got the old crop, get it moved, get it priced. Uh, we're quite a ways off the lows right now, uh, speaking uh, on Wednesday. So uh, it, you know, I'm not going to tell you not to try to get as much as you can out of the crop, but I'm also aware that uh, when things go up, they can go down. You said one of the things that maybe people should keep in mind is that it's never a bad idea to sell to pay off notes. Why is that? Right. Uh, you know, I've, I get a lot of questions from people when the conditions are the way they are right now. They're, okay, uh, what do I do? I don't, I don't know whether to sell or not sell. I, I'm, I'm just confused and lost. And my philosophy has been that in 40 years of farming, it has never been a mistake to sell grain and, and pay off loans. That the very worst that can happen if you do that is that you stop interest and you generate cash flow. And uh, interest and cash flow are two things that, that are always there. And if you have grain in the bin, you need to be aware that you raised it to sell. You wrote recently on agriculture.com about basis, and as we talk about it today, how do you look at it for using it in a marketing purpose? Well, first of all, I'd say that, that you know, in my case, I'm sold out of old crop corn so and beans both, so just forget that and let's look forward. And uh, I need to sell some new crop corn and beans both. and the basis right now has widened out quite a bit because of the government report and the surprise government report that came out. And so, you know, I say you need to, if you're going to forward contract, which uh, is a good idea most of the time, especially with a crazy market like we've got, 
you need to figure out a way of taking advantage of the basis and if the basis is extremely wide as it is pretty wide right now look at either selling futures or selling hedge to arrive contract if the basis that you're being offered is extremely good then you sell a cash forward contract and uh, and you're all set so it, it, it kind of works both ways depending on w whether the basis is suits your needs or not. Now we're not that far away from the September crop report and if I remember correctly you have a philosophy on that report, yes? Yes. The uh, strategy that has worked very well over a period of many years is sell the day before the September crop report. Last year it was off one day, that's 2014. So, it, but in general, the, the trade anticipates that September crop report, and when it's passed, then the price goes back down. So the way to beat that is to sell the day before or a couple of days before the September crop report, especially if you're uh, going to take grain to the elevator at harvest time uh, and you want to do cash forward contracts, that's a good time to do it.